everyone, my name is Tiffany Jansen and I'm an astronomer in the Cool Worlds group here at Columbia University. You may have heard of the recently discovered exoplanetary system TRAPPIST-1. And if you're anything like me, you immediately started daydreaming about some of the best beer in the world. But just in case you haven't heard of it yet, TRAPPIST-1 is a system with seven Earth-sized planets, three of which could potentially host liquid water. And at 40 light years away, it's relatively close. The question that seems to be on everyone's mind now is whether or not these planets could have life. One way to look for life on other worlds is to study the atmospheres of exoplanets to look for what are called biosignatures. Biosignatures are molecular fingerprints in a planet's atmosphere that are produced by nothing other than life. For example, oxygen produced by photosynthetic life, or methane from digestive processes. We can look for biosignatures in a planet's atmosphere using transmission spectroscopy. This method has been mentioned a few times in previous Cool Worlds videos, but just in case you need a refresher, transmission spectroscopy measures what's in a planet's atmosphere by looking for molecular fingerprints in the starlight that gets filtered through a planet's atmosphere as it passes between us and its star. In particular, we are looking for signatures of molecules existing in strong chemical disequilibrium. Chemical disequilibrium occurs when two molecules that would normally consume each other appear to exist simultaneously. If you observe an atmosphere in chemical disequilibrium, chances are that the particles that would normally consume each other are constantly being replenished by some source. It's like having a dog in your kitchen while you're trying to cook. Every time you drop a little food, the dog will eat it. If someone looks into the kitchen and sees food on the floor, chances are you're dropping food over and over because by the time they look into the kitchen, the dog will have already eaten it. One example of two such molecules are oxygen and methane. In our kitchen analogy, methane is like the dog and oxygen is like those pieces of cheese that you keep dropping on the floor. On Earth, these molecules exist together because they're constantly being replenished by photosynthesis and fossil fuel consumption, mostly. If you're thinking that there's some way these molecules can be formed by something other than life, then you'd be right. Molecular oxygen can be produced in other ways than photosynthesis, such as by photodissociation of H2O or CO2. Photodissociation is when a photon enters the atmosphere, collides with the molecule, and has enough energy to break that molecule up. For instance, when a UV photon collides with CO2, which frees up the oxygen so that it can go off and make O2. The detection of molecular oxygen produced by an abiotic source is what we'd call a false positive biosignature. A signature that looks like it was produced by life when actually it was produced by an abiotic source. Even if we did detect large amounts of methane and oxygen in chemical disequilibrium in an atmosphere of an alien world, it wouldn't necessarily guarantee the presence of a biosphere. Another possible false positive signature could come from the presence of an unresolved exomoon. Imagine a moon with an atmosphere full of methane orbiting a planet with an atmosphere full of oxygen. The moon is so close to the planet that when viewed from light years away, their light blurs together and appears like one object. In most cases, it would be impossible to tell the difference between a planet and a moon with completely different compositions and a single planetary body in chemical disequilibrium. If that doesn't frustrate you enough, just wait. There's more. It's possible that we could discern the composition of an atmosphere on an exoplanet teeming with life and never detect any signs of life at all. This is what's called a false negative signal. For example, there are microbes that live in oceanic and freshwater sediments here on Earth that may hide the detectability of biosignatures such as methane. Essentially, these microbes recycle the biosignature gas methane by transforming it via oxidation into other molecules like H2O and CO2. So all of that biosignature gas that would have been in the atmosphere is hogged by the life itself. In fact, a recent paper by Reinhardt and company showed that even Earth would have produced a false negative signature for most of its life-bearing history. Even though oxygen was being produced by photosynthesis billions of years ago, it may have gone undetected because most of that oxygen was going towards the oxidation of iron on the surface. So if biosignatures can be hidden, and if they can be detected, but we can't be sure they were even produced by life, can we ever be sure that we can detect life at all? Well, it's still an active area of research. Maybe I'll leave some possible solutions for another video. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe. And until next time, thanks for watching. 
Transmission spectroscopy of H2O or CO2 or dang it. The detection of molecular 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 it's a hard word to say. <laughs> now I'm going now I'm really going crazy. <laughs>